Okay. So, this one here is for AJ Pickett because he makes all the coolest figures I have ever seen in my life. Oh my god. Yeah. I did not realize that Sculpey could be baked more than once. So I had been making single sculpt miniatures like this one. And you can only just stick it in the oven because you can only touch it so much before your naga is well it, it becomes malformed and so I decided to show you a bunch of the ones I did before I I started doing the the multi bake thing because I didn't realize you could even do that and and wow amazingly better technique these ropers are also a a, a single mold sculpt because you can't really do much with Sculpey once it goes in the oven, I thought. Um, let's see. What other? This guy. That's a ping pong ball with a hole cut in it. And some beads. And some hot glue. And some broken toothpicks. And a couple of pieces of air dry clay. And it turned out rather magnificently, I thought. But that's just me. Um, this uh -huh, is my first attempt at uh, people miniatures. I watched Jan Pilasek, I hope I got your name right, video. And that guy is just a wireframe with hot glue and cardstock. And he turned out freaking great. Okay. Um, my Jubilex. <laughs> I gotta scoot some guys over. <laughs> my Jubilex originally started off as a hot glue blob that was developing on the base of my desk. And I cut it out and started adding things to it. And it turned out really cool. Here, check out the other side. He's got a couple other eyeballs on the other side. So awesome. But then anyway, and then uh, the grill. We talked about the grill because it started off. I was, I was uh, watching the video on how to make a flump. And we all started talking about the grill and, and how to make which kind of grill or, or what to make them out of. And AJ made his out of, out of, uh, he made the beaks out of Sculpey and baked them and they, they turned out so much better than mine. I, I, I would advise you to watch his video on that. This one turned out cooler because he got the, the, uh, the toilet paper and glue overlay on the brain portion of it like this and it turned out so much cooler looking I would advise not even doing the beaks with the air dry clay but doing them with Sculpey separately and then baking baking them and adding them on later because this is what happens you see that broken off so anyway Thanks, AJ, for teaching me all the stuff. Oh, wait, wait. <laughs> Almost forgot a couple of things. This is a different method for making spiders. This is just wire and a bead. So easy. I kind of I kinda stole mini terrain domains thing on using the wire. But all in all this technique works really awesome for making spiders and uh, this I, I, I wanted to show you more the base of this than anything else because it's a mold made with silicon and it uh, eh, I'm killing grills <laughs> that's kind of fun huh but the mold was made from silicone, and I put a bunch of the bones, uh, skeletons in there, 
and it turned out really cool. And it's kind of my tribute to uh, to uh, oh, what's his name now? I can't even remember. But uh, this bat demon was created by techniques from uh, Dave O'Gara. In fact, this was created directly after watching a Dave O'Gara video. But anyway, um, this turned out kind of cool too. It's just cut pieces on a hot and hot glue on a wire frame. And yeah, it turned out totally cool. But, uh, and then the last thing I wanted to mention was, uh, this piece. And it turned out kind of cool because, uh, I'm kind of a mineral collector anyway, but I wanted to grow crystals on the base of a miniature. And I had seen, uh, Nelson from Infinite Roleplay do this thing where he had connected sand to some wire armatures and made these really cool ass earth elementals. Well, I didn't realize the shit would wick up the figure and grow crystals halfway up his body. And I will show that if anybody's interested. But, uh, yeah, that was my last cool homemade one I was going to show tonight. Um, please comment. I'm so lonely. <laughs>